immediately the gates are open for the big game. This little fella has no doubts as to who'll win. It's the Rabbitohs forever. Though their underdogs, Saints players, reflect confidence. Their international 5'8", Tony Branson, and former Englishman, winger Ken Batty. Saints to win. Well, we're hoping it'll be a uh, St George loss and a South Sydney victory today, Frank. South to win. No, I think it'll be a hard game, a close game. I think if our forwards can hold uh, South Sydney forwards, I think our backs can finish the, the movements off. We've gone along with a vastly inexperienced side, and um, it's brought the best out of me and Graham. If we can help them along as we can, well, we, we just do our best anyway, and we just hope it's enough today to get us through. It's going to be a very hard game. I think St George are a good side, but I think South are a better side, and I'm hoping that uh, South win. Well, I'm going for Saints. I think the Saints with Langlands and Smith will be too strong for South. Although they have McCarthy there, a wonderful player and a really great player, but I'd say Saints to win. And I feel that if we do win the ball, especially in the early stages, that, that this will uh, uh, save us the task of tackling South Sydney and, and perhaps we won't get softened up as much as people think. Can't help but admire St George's effort right throughout the season based on very tight defence and relying on people like Langlands and Smith to provide the try scoring movements and point scoring movements but all round on a day like today I think South has got too many talented players. The sun's beaming down here today very hot and um, I feel that they would uh, they could make the difference in the forwards. Uh, they're a big pack South Sydney but the, also the heat might help St George with their little lighter pack. Mm, I think South will win. Uh, I expect them to win of course. St George will give them a very good go. Langlands and Billy Smith and Gibson. You know they're a great trio but uh, with Johnny Sattler and uh, McCarthy and Ronnie Coot and all the rest of the boys, I think our team will win a game. Sattler leads South Sydney, whose team includes ten internationals. They're the defending premiers, but last time they opposed St George in a grand final in 1965, they went down by four points. St George, led by Langlands, make their first grand final appearance since defeating Balmain in 1966. A victory that took them to a world record 11 successive premierships. They have only four internationals in today's lineup, and their forwards are considerably outweighed by Souths. Former Test record break halfback Keith Holman officiates in his first major grade grand final. Langland's long range kickoff is fielded by Sims. Immediately defining South's pattern, Sims punts the ball back to Saints territory. It's the Rabbitohs' intention to hold the opposition in their own half, where, if held, they'll be under constant pressure. Madison feels the impact of South's big men, who are determined to control the rucks. But O'Neill is penalised for punching for about 35 yards out from South's line. A driving tackle by Stevens on Eden emphasises South's forward's plan to soften up their considerably lighter opponents. Trying the blind side, Beef comes in for similar treatment. Smith discovers there's no weakness in the one-line defensive screen as Souths anticipate the Dragons' blindside manoeuvres. The forward battle functions in earnest as Bowen takes play to the 25. The formidable combination of Smith and Beef penetrate on the last tackle. Working to a preconceived idea, Saints kick into touch to ensure gaining the loose head in the scrum. It's a calculated risk which sometimes fails to come off, and not only do they lose possession, but also the ground they've won. Now, South's forwards challenge Saints' defence as they ruck the ball out. O'Neill crashes over the 25. McCarthy. O'Neill again. Dummy half Grant back to Sims who drives play into St George's half. Standing up in Sates tackle, Batty is taken over the top by Homer. St George try to go up the middle but that's where Souths are at their strongest. Sattler is ruled offside, and again St. George capture the initiative. In close, Sattler and Stevens are tackling to telling effect. 
Higgins rakes the ball away from Beath, enabling South to turn defense into attack. Exchanging blows, Bowen and O'Neill are called out by referee Holman. Both are warned, but being the instigator, Bowen brings a penalty against St. George, and with the wind at their backs, Souths are set for a thrust. Strategically positioned on each side of the ruck, Souths forwards make maximum use of their additional weight and strength. Many times, two and three defenders combine to execute tackles, and the punishing nature of the game is testing the fitness of all 26 players. A clever reverse pass from Sattler sends Coote through. Onto McCarthy, who touches down, but it's no try. Coote's pass being ruled forward. Sattler's constructive leadership is a steadying influence. At every opportunity, Souths try to split the defense up the middle. pass from McCarthy is accepted by Pittard and he steams through into the open with Waltham in pursuit and Grant in support. Breaking through Langland's tackle, Pittard charges for the line but is brought down by Carr a few feet short after a 65 yards burst. Quickly getting into position on their line, the Dragons hold Honan out. He loses the ball to Waltham, the ever-reliable Langlands takes over a dummy half. Saints' experienced inside backs assume the responsibility of running the ball, giving their teammates time to study. Branson to Madison, and Saints are out of their own 25. Branson's dummy almost succeeds as the backs continue making ground. Carter Langlands, who clears the danger area. Sattler spearheads a South's raid up the center. McCarthy from the fringe of the rucks a potential danger. Grant to Sims, position for a field goal shot. Between the posts for the first point of the game. The slow motion camera as Walton breaks through the strongest part of South's one-line defense. Coote covers, but St. George form up for an all-out attack. In his capacity of link man, Smith sends St. George forward as Langlands comes up to join in the movement. As a counter to Langlands' dangerous sidestepping runs, Souths have a forward each side of him and one behind. This time it's McCarthy who takes him. Though prepared to spin the ball, St. George are constantly restricted by relentless tackling. They go the blind. Eden to Beef with Fatty in support. Forced into touch at the corner flag, Beef misses scoring by inches. In typical fashion, Smith tirelessly seeks to outgeneral the opposition. Branson is off and up to take the first pass from the play the ball. A perfectly executed grubber kick by Eden. Following through, he's blocked by Stevens as McCarthy runs the ball out. Skirting the defense, Pittard tries to step inside, but there's no place to go. Sattler leads the way as Souths again employ their forward power. From dummy half, Grant works the forwards, but there's a tendency towards individual play as South's big men go to ground with the ball. Sims knocks on, and for incorrectly feeding the ensuing scrum, Grant is penalized within reasonable goal-kicking distance for St. George.
batting 75 throughout the season, Langlands is wide with this one. Top point scorer of the competition with 192 to his credit, Langlands' overall game has reached great heights in 71. Saints maintain their tigerish tackling, which has earned them the highest commendations and has been a major factor in their reaching the grand final. Grant to Honan. He loses the ball, but backing up, Pittard recovers possession and there's six more tackles to go. McCarthy on the blind. Inside to Pittard, but again he's dragged down just short of the line. McCarthy once more goes the blind, but is tackled into touch. The Quicksilver Smith finds an opening, but Sattler, who's at the peak of his form, closes on him. There's little, if any, chance of Saints breaking through the center. Smith sends Beath away on a weaving burst. With the line wide open, he passes to Eden, who knocks on. And a seemingly certain try is lost. Piggins is penalized for feet across the tunnel of the scrum, about 30 yards out and 10 yards in from touch. Chance for St. George to take the lead, but Langland's angled attempt is too wide. Possession from the scrums is fairly even, but attempts by St. George to open up play is countered by South's speedier backs moving up on their counterparts. Langland's chimes in, endeavoring to straighten the attack. Bowen's ragged pass costs St. George about 15 valuable yards. Madison is put down by a typical Grant tackle. Forced wide by the defense, Beath is taken by Piggins with the assistance of O'Neill. Exploiting one of South's loose rocks, Eden accelerates through an opening. At top pace, he's taken by Sims within sight of the South line. Fitzgerald on the blind side. No addition to the score by half-time, South's holding an historic 1-0 lead, and it's the first time such a score is registered in a grand final. On the resumption, Smith gets to the 25 before being grounded by Sattler and Piggins. Taking the ball on the burst, Beef tries to slice through the ruck where the defense is well-nigh impregnable. The Dragons obviously intend making full use of the wind, Langland sending the ball spiraling into South's half. Sims is prevented from linking up with supports, and Saints will do their utmost to keep them on their side of halfway. McCarthy's crossfield dash counters the Dragons' plan, and South's are poised to test Saints' resources. Piggins slips a superbly timed pass to Stevens. On to Coote. The defense is scrambled as Brannigan heads for the line. Fending off Smith, Brannigan goes in for the first try. Sims' conversion attempt strikes an upright. Souths, 4-0. Running wide from the scrum base, Grant links up with inside. Smith brings his dangerous burst to a halt. The little halfback is tackling them off. A misunderstanding by Saints and they knock on. Souths fail to capitalize as they too knock on. Displaying renewed confidence, Saints' second half form is the best he's produced since the 70 world. The first tackle. His forceful methods must be taking their toll on the lightweight St. George pack. The forwards set up the backs. Saints' purposeful running splits the defense, and he's especially dangerous inside the 25. Conan works the forwards. Dummying, Sattler sends Coop through a narrow gap, and he's over. by Sate, and the try again in slow motion. Sim 
Lions conversion takes Souths to a 9-0 lead, and they threaten to take control of the match. The brilliant McCarthy breaks into the clear, and he's flying. A textbook tackle by Langlands, as two greats of the code show their worth. Whereas earlier each side had the same amount of territorial advantage, Souths now appear to be gaining the edge. Sattler is always prepared to lead the way in the heavy work. Functioning smoothly, Souths get to within 15 yards of Saints line. From a scrum right in front of the goal mouth, Smith and Rasmussen are penalised, providing an easy shot for the talented Sims. And in a grand final, that's generally pretty close to a winning lead. But not as far as St. George is concerned. Accepting the challenge, they become more enterprising in their search for openings. Langlands is eager to get into the play as much as possible. Hansen switches the point of attack, but Souths have the blind side well protected. Backs and forwards interchange passes in their efforts to wrong foot the opposition. On the last tackle, Rasmussen sends to Smith. A memorable pass to beat, and the second rail goes in to score. The conversion is to be taken from a sharp angle by Langlands. Six points the difference. Smith runs into some rugged tackling. Higgins is called out for a warning as ambulance attention is on its way to the prostrate half. Revitalized, St. George are right back in the game. It's South's turn now to go on to hard defense. The Dragons are making ground in each tackle. is almost in. Smith to Cox. On to Walton, and he's over. Langland's fluent conversion takes Saints to within a point of their rivals with 12 minutes remaining. The sudden and dramatic fight back adds considerably to the tension, and in such circumstances, experience is a vital factor. Souths have the forwards to handle such a situation. At no other time during the season has Saints tackling prestige been more sorely tested. make contact with the ball, Souths get six more tackles, and they're only eight yards out. The Rabbitohs use their powerhouses in bruising individual raids on the line.
Saints courageous defense repulses Tufts' non-stop efforts. But just how long can good small men hold off good big men? Higgins rakes the ball away from Cox. A loss of possession Saints could ill afford. Still, they tackle tenaciously. Souths are going up the middle again. O'Neill in the forefront. Higgins charges head on. Again working the forwards, Grant sends to Cooth with McCarthy in support on the inside. He takes the reverse pass and dashes 20 yards to touch down between the posts. Simple conversion for Sims, and with little time left, Souths are safe. <laughs> Full time, Souths win 16-10. It's their second successive premiership and their fourth in five years. Their loss to Balmain in 69, breaking the sequence. Since the code's inception, Souths have won a record 20 premierships.